Lacey Clune with Market Beat here. Thank you for joining us today. You're going to want to thank yourself for tuning in after you watch today's video because we will be discussing three high dividend kings that you need to know about for 2023. Before we get started, take just a second, pause this video if you have to. Please double check that you are subscribed to our channel. Your support on this channel will help us continue to deliver timely and relevant stock market news you need in order to make confident investment decisions. I'm excited to welcome back Market Beat contributor Thomas Hughes. Thomas, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Lacey. How are you today? Great. Thanks for asking. Okay, Thomas, let's just get into it right away. What is the big deal with Dividend Kings? They've raised their dividends for 50 years, but so what? Why is that an advantage for investors? The stocks don't often trade at a value and the yields aren't all that great compared to other dividend stocks you cover. What makes them such a tightly held group? Well, 50 years is a long time. Uh, I'm not even 50 years old myself and think of all the things that I've lived through. I was born during the Vietnam War. That's been over for decades. But these companies have been around for a very, very long time. They've seen a lot. They have a lot of experience to offer. And it really comes down also to sound management. And not just good management, but management with the foresight and a plan to be ready for things, things like COVID. How do you plan for COVID? I mean, that was a really, that was a big blow to a lot of companies. And yet these mm -hmm. companies have proven that they can withstand these kinds of market downturns, still pay their dividends and still increase it. That means reliable income for dividend investors and an ever increasing yield on your original investment. And what that means is a hedge against inflation. If you know that your original investment is going to make 5% and every year they raise the dividend, then you're getting more on your original investment and you're offsetting inflation. And then uh, the price movement, and especially in price pullbacks, um, these dividend uh, dividend kings are buy and hold stocks. They're not really the trigger to, to sell that it might be for another stock. Investors need to look forward to those kinds of pullbacks because <clears throat> those are the times that they want to buy. You want a dollar cost average into your position over time at the lowest possible prices, and that means waiting for pullbacks. So, Thomas, we want to know which ones are on your radar right now. Well, right now I'm looking at Lowe's, AbbVie, and PepsiCo. Uh, we recently talked about PepsiCo and didn't really touch on its status as a dividend king. The Dividend King is a stock that's raised its dividend for 50 years, and uh, that's a big deal for PepsiCo. It helps attract buy and hold investors because they know the dividend's safe and it's going to be increased every year. Um, so PepsiCo didn't really win the Cola Wars, but is absolutely winning in the Consumer Staples Wars. It's a top five Consumer Staples stock by market cap and the number one packaged food company in the world on top of being a Dividend King. And the yield is pretty good, too. It's a 2.5% yield. That's more than 100 basis points, more than the, uh, the S&P 500. And it's a pretty safe yield. You can, you can rely on it. That's really the point of Dividend Kings is the reliability. And then the beta or the volatility in PepsiCo is really good, too. Dividend Kings, buy and hold stocks have lower betas. That means that they're less volatile than the S&P 500. PepsiCo's beta is only a 0.6, so that means it's only 60% as volatile as the S&P 500. When the market crashes, it won't crash as much as the S&P 500, and that is a provides a sense of safety for investors. Okay, and PepsiCo is trending higher, isn't it? It is. Let me pull up my chart. All right, you can see that PepsiCo has been trending higher very steadily for the last couple of years, and right now it's pulled back. To the trend line this might look scary to some people but on a technical basis this is a classic entry point for the stock let's move on to abv you give it an honorable status what is up with that well honorable status abv has only been around since about 2013 so it hasn't been around long enough to even be a dividend aristocrat so far as consecutive annual dividend increases go but abv began as the pharmaceutical branch of abbott Abbott Laboratories is a dividend king. AbbV is managed much the same way as Abbott is. It has been paying a dividend and it has been increasing its yield, its, its payout every year. So we give it honorable status because it's on track to be an aristocrat. We have full expectations as the market. When I say we, we, the market has a full expectation that it will continue to increase its dividend until it reaches that status. Where are the stock prices going for AbbVie in 2023? 
AbV in 2023. Let's pull up that chart. So AbV, up here, you've got a top that's formed. And this top is because of COVID and Humira. COVID sales boosted uh, AbV stock prices a pretty good amount. And then uh, slowing sales in Humira plus the uh, the post the post COVID uh, letdown has put a top in the stock. Right now, AbV is probably going to be trading in a range. It'll be topped out up here, but down here at the bottom, I see support uh, stepping in. I think that'll be a good zone to buy the stock. Let's talk about lows for a minute just before we wrap this up. What do you have for us there? Right, I think lows is begging to be bought. This stock has value and yield and dividend safety on top of being a dividend king. Uh, the value relative to its peers, um, like Home Depot, is uh, is fantastic. It's trading at uh, like five handles lower than than Home Depot, and uh, the yield is very comparable. The outlook for growth is really what's what's got me. It's got a much healthier outlook for dividend growth. Not to mention Home D in the past has cut its dividend um, for safety reasons to brought it back, but Lowe's has never done that. So there's a, a reliability factor there as well. Um, and it's only paying 28% of its earnings. So that means it's got a lot of ammunition on the books to continue increasing its dividend. Uh, there's just nothing not to like about it. And what about housing trends? Won't a downturn in home building activity hurt this company? Sure it will, but that will be offset by the DIY and home improvement channels. People who don't move are upgrading. Look at me. My wife and I, we can't afford a bigger house because it's just too expensive. We will lose money mm -hmm. to do that. But we've been spending money on upgrading our house. Lowe's has a much better mix than Home Depot as far as DIY channels go, and that should help support the business over the next year. The next EPS is due out in the February, and I think that could be a real catalyst for the market. All right. And our content manager says you have a sleeper for us as well. 3M, isn't that one a bit risky? Yes, 3M, risky. It has some litigation pending uh, related to the hearing protection of the armed forces and to some forever chemicals that it produces. These, uh, these litigations could cost the company billions. Uh, this has the price action down to a decade low. And that's uh, delivering some valuation and a high yield for investors. The stock is yielding 4.6%, which is absolutely unheard of for a dividend king. It could be a red flag. The company might have to cut or suspend the dividend. But uh, investors that can tolerate a little bit of risk should be able to count on it, at least for this year. And then if the company is able to make it through this bad time, the way that dividend kings are usually able to do, the stock could be in for a real, real big gain. All right, guys, I think that's all the time we have for today. I'm sure every investor has at some point experienced the scramble of researching each individual stock they own for the latest news that might affect their investments right before the stock market opens. You've had to browse page after page, open tab after tab to collect the data you need to make informed decisions. If you haven't learned by now, there is an easier way. Market All Access is your solution to implement an all-in-one place pre-market trading routine that is consistent and effective. And now you can get it free for 30 days by clicking the link I've included in the description below. This is a limited time offer, so do not wait. Get started and click that link. Before we go, please make sure you've liked this video and subscribed to our channel so we can continue to provide you with the stock market information you need to benefit your portfolio. While you're at it, feel free to leave us a comment down below and let us know what you enjoyed most about today's discussion and if you'll be making any adjustments to your investments after tuning in. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks, Lisa. See you next time.